Hey everybody, Rick Sonoto here, Florida licensed realtor, Florida licensed home inspector, Florida Notary Public with loan signing agent certification, your construction train realtor, and having construction based licensing and additional certifications is one of the many things that separates me from the other realtors out there. They don't have that ability to help the customer in that way because they don't understand construction, they don't understand home defects. So my goal is always to help my customers reduce defects and especially if you're building a house from scratch or if you're purchasing a new construction completed house or if you're purchasing a used resale house you always want to be concerned about defects 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 I know most buyers are concerned with the price of the house the best area the best location but they completely overlook that and many times they get stuck with a house that has all these issues and end up having to spend hundreds or thousands of dollars out of pocket after they close to make repairs so you always want to be smart about it from start to finish. And my service to you is essentially free because the builder does pay for it. It's use it or lose it. It does not cost you anything to have me. It does not cost you anything additional to have me help you or represent you along the way. You will not get a better deal by having me not help you. Many times you get the best deal by having me there with you. And also too, I work for you and represent you as a home buyer's agent. You know, I work for any home builders. Salespeople at the builders always work for the builder with the builder's best interest in mind and typically that's in the contract somewhere so check that out look out for that also too it's always a good idea to contact me first before you contact builders when you contact them first you may lose or avoid that paid for by the builder realtor representation so they typically want me to contact you on your behalf first. some builders are a little bit more easy going with that some are not you contact them once and that's it speaking of that we are at Lennar Lennar is pretty much like that they're pretty strict you contact them once and typically it's over but if you've been in contact with any builder you could always contact me to see if I can still help you sometimes people make that mistake and they contact me after and it works out and sometimes it doesn't this model is the Sorrento model big beautiful house look at that boy it's hot and sunny very nice grass very soft smushy grass type of grass this is. So the Sorrento, yeah, it's a big house. What is this, like 4,000 square feet? I don't know, maybe it's 3,500. Just guessing. There's a three-car garage. Let's see what the sign's going to say. Ah, 3,283 square feet. Five beds, four and a half baths with a loft. We are at Veranda Village over in Estero, Florida, and Estero's next to Fort Myers very nice now of course your house is not gonna have plants in front of the garage I know people ask me that sometimes oh it feels good good to be out of the, out of the heat it's like 98 degrees crazy so this feels very different when you first walk in so here's where I'm standing over by the door. Let's see what this is. Garage door, maybe? Yep, garage. All right. Yeah, very different feeling. I like this because usually you walk into homes and it's a hallway and there's a door, you know, for a room and another door. But this is different. And then, of course, over there's a dining room. So you could see just how different this house is already. And I like that. My question is, do I have a video of a Sorrento? And I don't know, I can't remember. I have so many videos. Check out my other videos, there's tons of them. I think I'm at 1200 or so at this point, maybe more, I don't even know. I'll just continue this way.
Now this is a model house, so it may or may not have upgrades. Typically, though, models have a lot of upgrades. Let's check this out. This is part of the pantry. Yeah. There's a pantry. Very high ceiling. So you have a good amount of countertop space because you got that, that section over there too. So plenty of space to cook and put things on. And this community's natural gas. There's your dishwasher. Very big living room area. This is kind of interesting because there's no TV set up here. Usually they always have a TV. Kind of like that though. Half bathroom and storage under the stairs that I have set up as a as a dog's closet. Dog's house, I mean. Another garage with some good width on each side of the door. HVAC closet. And the laundry room with a hall closet. So pretty so pretty much this laundry room is kind of like the I'm not gonna say the minimum size, but you know, a step up from that because usually the minimum size is like when they have them in some of the townhomes where you open up the closet in the hall and just there they're like in a closet, but this one's not in a closet, so kind of the basic, I guess, the basic size for something that's in, in a in a room, so to speak. Here's another bedroom. Oh, this goes outside to the back. How nice is that? And this one's in a full bath here. Yeah, wow, it's great. We got this all screened in and ready for a pool. I shouldn't say ready for a pool, it has a pool. Actually, I think I was trying to say, what I was trying to say was that the room is like ready for a pool with that door in the bathroom there for the convenience of it. All right, let's go upstairs and take a look. I like that we got some landings here. So you don't have to go up too many stairs before you can take a pause if you need to. And then go up a few more stairs to, let's see, what do we have here? Oh, big loft. So anytime you have this type of an open area, you know, you always lose space on the second floor that you could have had. But people like this kind of open feeling. It's a very decent sized room over here. I guess it's a loft. Two sinks, your double sinks, and your toilet and your bathroom in a separate room. That's nice. Which connects over to where we have another bedroom. Yeah. Another bedroom. And there's a walk in closet. closet and a 
and then the bedroom. So this does not have a walk-in closet. away from the loft we have a master bedroom boy is this a big room the ceiling height here is probably eight feet you can see I could touch it Oh, a very large master bedroom. What do we have here? A closet. Oh, this is big. Yeah, it's a big closet. What's this? Oh, another closet. Yeah, smaller closet, but another closet. Nonetheless, let's see. What do we have? There's me. And... So a sink off to the left, sink straight ahead. And the tile floor that looks like wood. Ah, this tile, I had this tile in one of my other homes, this color tile. Past homes, I should say. And the toilet in the closet room. Nothing ever exciting in that toilet in the closet room. On a rare occasion, they get a window. <laughs> but that's it. Let's go to the right. I don't think we've been there yet. It's a good sized bedroom for sure. You, you can see how big this piece of furniture is. That's a big piece. Plus they have one over there and there's still space all around it. So nice sized bedroom. Plus it has, oh this one has a shower. Oh wow. Yep. So this is what I mean when I talk about sometimes the space, like some of the half baths. Like they could easily put one of these in there in a lot of these half bathrooms, but they don't. So I always think that like a lot of half beds are just a total waste, especially on the first floor. Like when the first floor only has a half bath, but they could install a, a small shower like this with the standard size uh, drain pan. Yep, HVAC. I figured that was it. All right, so I'm in the bathroom with the with a small shower, and you can see this is what I mean when I talk about you know they can they can install these in a lot of half baths because a lot of half baths have the space for it, but they don't. When I say they, I'm just talking about the builders in general. Okay, so what do I like about this? Well, huge master bedroom. This master bedroom is just it's really big, and I like the fact. You have the two closets here. And this bathroom is very spacious. So, sink, sink. Plenty of room for two people to get ready, plus shower, and maybe even use the toilet in the closet. Two, uh, the two closets are great too, because not everybody has a lot of clothes. So, you know, maybe the person with less clothes can put them in here, or, a smaller closet could be used as like a, a toy storage for kids or something like that. Now this room 
This is kind of interesting that they put a chair over here, place to read, and then we have this loft. So, nice. Now, to be honest, because I always am, I personally am not so crazy about homes that are set up like this, where you know you look down to the first floor. It's just not my thing. The same way I don't really like single story homes. It's just not my thing. And I know a lot of people love single stories. A lot of people love homes that are set up like this. So I just wanna give my honest opinion, but this is a really nice house. There's no doubt about it. And I love that it has a landing here. You go down a few steps and then you go down a few more steps. So if you're getting older, you know, you could buy a house like this and, you know, potentially still go upstairs without it being like, you know, 15 steps to the top, <laughs> you know, in like one run. So I think that's great. And then also too, if you're older, you have a washer and dryer over here. So, you know, you'd miss out on the huge master bedroom, but you could still maybe have this uh, bedroom over here, which is by the pool. So you miss out on having a huge master bedroom on the second floor possibly, but you can maybe, you know, use this for a bedroom because it would be close to the washer and dryer, which is also great for somebody that might be younger and buying the house and they're gonna have an older family member move in. They could sleep in that room, so it's really great. And then they have easy access to the washing machine and, and to the kitchen, which is over here. So, yeah, very well thought out floor plan. I like it. And I like the space of these rooms. Let me move this far away. I like this. I like this a lot. Just because I'm so tired of like always like the hallway and the, the rooms and, you know, I get it. I get why they do that. Well, thank you for watching this video. I appreciate you stopping by. Please check out my website at richnotohomes.com. You can find the latest homes for sale at the bottom of each community's page if it's listed on the MLS. If I've made a page for the community, of course. And thank you to my current customers. I appreciate you and my past customers as well. Thank you for your business. Hope everyone has a fantastic day. Prior to being a realtor, I purchased a house without a realtor and then with a realtor who had no construction training, no construction certification. And I can tell you that it's extremely important to have a realtor with construction certification. Here's how to get my service paid for by the builder free to you. Please contact me first before you contact any home builder. When you contact the home builder first, you may lose your paid for by the builder realtor representation. If you email them, call them, text them, go to the sales office, walk the models, anything that they can match up at the time of contract, they may say you cannot use a realtor. Please don't contact the builder and ask what their policies are either because that would be your first contact. You see how this works? When I went to purchase my first house, I was given terrible advice. Everybody told me I had to pay for a realtor, which is just not true. I had no realtor and it was terrible. From start to finish, it was exhausting. I was treated poorly at sales offices and after I signed my contract, the salesperson basically vanished on me. It was just a terrible experience. When I purchased my second house, House, I knew I needed a realtor, so I started searching. I encountered top sellers who seemed impressive, but they were just high pressure sales. They were telling me to go to the builder, tell them I'm your realtor. When you pick out the house you want, contact me and I'll come down and help you. They would show me two homes, three homes, ask me which one do I want to buy. Many of them couldn't even respond properly to an email, which is much like when I help my buyers to find resale homes. Many of the realtors that are selling these homes, it's like they don't even read what you wrote. So my my realtor ended up being a new realtor. He was loyal. He went with me to like 20 builders that I picked out. He wasn't selling me out to sales associates. He wasn't selling me out to other realtors. He wasn't selling me out to resale home sellers. He was no doubt on my side. So like most realtors, the realtor that I picked had no construction training, no certification. At the time, I didn't even consider it. As we went from house to house with new construction, with resales, there were times I had questions and 
he didn't know or he was kind of guessing and he would at least tell me he's just guessing. The information that I received was incorrect. I realized that home inspectors are there to look over a house and find issues with them. But let's face it, the home inspector is with you for two hours, three hours looking at the house that you're interested in buying. Your realtor is with you, if the realtor is a good realtor, for potentially six months, 12 months while a new construction house is being built. Your realtor is going to be the one that's going to be there with you when you're dealing with rude, obnoxious construction managers that are lying to you when the home is built incorrectly and they just want you to just go away. They want you to just sign, say the house is okay, or it's going to be passed off the warranty, and that's it. So having a realtor without construction background is not a good idea. And if I was going to be buying a house in another state, even though I have a home inspector's license and I am trained, I would still want to find a realtor that is construction trained because the more eyes, the better. Everybody's going to spot something different. Just some quick tips. Just want you to understand that. I believe in a comprehensive realtor service where I can answer and guide and look at home inspection reports and have an understanding of what's going on and how to help my buyers best. Thanks for watching this. Back to the video.